Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy the Feist back at it with another video. But before we get this started, if it's your first time here, definitely be sure to hit 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 that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think. You know, follow us on Twitch, come join us on Discord, all that good stuff. Uh today we are gonna be doing a champion guide on Madame Ceres, aka the witch. She is such a beast. I do love this character so much. Uh she like I use her in so many things right now absolutely fantastic character i've been wanting to do a guide on her for a minute but the first thing we're going to kind of talk about is kind of do the breakthrough uh, a breakdown of all the things that is really important with her so i'm just going to move my camera a little to the center for the time being while we talk about the items the skills and then once we get to the masteries i'll kind of shift my camera again more to the left so you can see the actual talent trees that i'm using for her right now i'm using her as believe it or not as uh oh we, we're getting these more uh these get, these comments are popping up. I hope we don't get more comments for the time being. But it's awesome that we do get comments. But uh, going to this, we're going to be talking about the artifacts, the skills, and then eventually the masteries. I do have her in an arena build right now, but I still use her for dungeons, and she's still incredible with that build alone. Like, um, I'll say it later in the the idea of when it comes to doing dungeons and stuff but usually i have the impression or feelings when you're trying to do a dungeon build you're going to always want to go around offense tree and then something else because you want to use either war master for them to contribute to the damage or giant slayer to contribute to the damage when you're fighting the boss uh but when you're doing arena builds like if it's a support character you know there's a really good chance that you want survivability out of them so you'll do a defense support combination you know what i mean you can still do defense offense and support offense but usually when it comes to like something that has a lot of utility i usually go for this type of build and it's really nice so first let's talk about the artifacts real quick my artifacts are slightly different from probably what a lot of people might do but this is incredible and i'm gonna explain this right now so madame saras is really incredible in the sense that she has a skill that gives a shield which we'll get into that in the detail but it really contributed to my decision on wanting to get this four piece set of basically it's two two sets of the immortal which basically every turn she heals by three percent multiply it by two six percent so she's getting a heal uh six percent heal every turn which is really incredible when it goes with her skill set uh then we also put you know one set uh bonus of accuracy because i wanted her accuracy to be really high for her skills to do the attack down defense down and removal of uh buffs that the enemy has so our current build is essentially those type of set items but if you kind of look at what i was really trying to go for for the most part accuracy was a huge priority so was hp and defense and then you know crit and crit damage kind of followed suit we did want some speed uh i wasn't too crazy on speed and the reason i i wasn't too crazy on speed with her and i'll explain it to you guys is essentially because i want her to remove buffs and i want her to survive so the idea is I, I, she's not the first person I want to go in the line of when enemies are attacking. I actually want them to go first to set some crap up so then we can take it away from them. So that's kind of the idea of what I was going for is like the high priority is really survivability. So like HP, defense, and then, you know, having some crit to make sure like, hey, they'll be able to, she'll be able to do crit and then some damage, but like having the accuracy and having resistance you know up to a point is like really good so if i were to give like an order of things that you would want hp defense uh accuracy and resist and then try to get all those other things up there eventually speed is going to probably be a lower priority from everything else because like i said you don't want her too slow don't get me wrong you still want her to have speed boots is the main stat but you're not trying to go overkill on this because we're going to start talking about the artifact like her skill sets in a second so if you see kind of here like we had attack 11 percent cool speed's nice accuracy was pretty high up there just for this accuracy item which is really cool and it had some resistance which is sick uh this helmet 
threw some really good accuracy in it and HP with a little bit of speed, which I loved. If we look at this accuracy shield, it had defense, which is just awesome. A 16% defense with 16% HP, really good landing right there. Like I couldn't ask for anything better in this case. And then we got a little bit of crit rate and some crit damage. Uh, here, I went for a crit rate in this case because I do still want her to do decent damage not crazy damage but a decent amount that when it happens it'll land but it does have accuracy and these are kind of trash stats but i am happy you know until i get something better this is what i'm going to be rocking because i do want the crit rate and i do have the accuracy on it you know crit damage isn't bad but this isn't a great item like we will eventually need to replace it but it is getting the job done especially with this set bonus if we go to this chest we obviously went for survivability in this case and we emphasized one of her higher stats that she has, which is either HP or defense. In this case, we went with HP. Uh, it also, obviously, because of this set bonus of getting more healing percentage on health, that's kind of the route that you should go. So we did that. Crit rate was 10, which is awesome. We did get some resistance out of this, which is sick. And we did get a little bit of speed. We got some attack percentage out there, which doesn't hurt as well. Uh, and then I think that covers basically just about all the things that we went for. And like, absolutely amazing. Like the fact that we're this high on accuracy is pretty awesome. It's good. So, so sorry guys, there was one more piece of item that I did want to talk. I didn't talk about the ring, the necklace, and the banner. So let's talk about that really quick and we'll sum it up. Uh, with uh, the ring, we went with HP as the main stat. We went with defense percentage, HP percentage. These are whatever, but it's the fact that we had defense HP. Uh, that was what made this ring really incredible for me. So I absolutely love that. So that's what we went for that. Obviously, survivability is key here. For uh, the amulet, we did go for crit damage because we did want to give some type of uh, crit damage when the crit happens because we are around 66% plus 15. So we are at like 80, let's see, 76, 81. 81 somewhere around there my math is and i'm not too sleepy <laughs> but that uh so we have we have decent crit and then basically we you know we got defense attack we landed on those we got accuracy we got resistance we got a lot of good things here this is pretty awesome and then finally for the banner we went for an accuracy banner which is what you're going to need to go to for especially for madame Ceres. and this had hp attack and defense with speed this is an incredible banner here i absolutely love it uh if it was a six star it would have been stoked but uh really 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 overall good banner for a five star i do love this one so those were the accessories i'm going to toss that right into the the artifact discussion because i did want to cover it and then we'll just continue from there <laughs> good so now let's talk about the skills because that's really the important part and you're going to see why i went with the immortal set once we go here so i'm just going to go into the passive first because I want you to understand why I chose the Immortal set. So, it places a shield buff on this champion equal to 10% of their max HP at the start of each uh, turn. And when attacked while under a shield buff, has a 35% chance of placing a fear debuff on the attacker for one turn. Really amazing... Um, crowd control when this person gets attacked with the shield really awesome now the reason i'm saying i went with the immortal set is because she's getting a 10 percent shield of the max hp so if you think about it she's getting 10 percent shield every turn and she's getting six percent health from the immortal set it's almost like if you think about it she's getting 16 percent health each time so while the shield helps her a little bit when she gets attacked we give her 6% health more and eventually her health starts going up a little bit if uh, they don't do enough damage. So it's really good to have that type of thing. Like she has so much good sustain when it comes to staying alive, specifically because of this uh, type of combination of a mortal with shield. So that's the reason why I went with this set and it is working really good guys for me. I actually do love having a two piece immortal set. If I wanted to go even further, I could probably get rid of the accuracy once we get a little higher on the, uh, in the, in the, what is it called? The hall. I was going to say hall of justice, the great hall. Uh, once we get a little higher on that, I know a lot of people are going to look at this and like, why are you all over the place? I will, I'm going to have a separate video in discussing on why I did this. And it's essentially like I build 
my stuff in an unorthodox way because I build according to what I need to get there faster. So a perfect example of what I was saying was like, yeah, I built some accuracy, which is awesome because that's what I kind of needed at the moment to get higher accuracy for like Madame and, and stuff like that. But I don't need to go higher just yet. Uh, what I did need was a fast farmer. So what did I do? I started to actually care about my Bellower. And if you saw my Bellower guide, you see that I farm insanely fast. I farm up to six seconds now at times. Like I farm at eight seconds. You know, it's really good farming. And my Bellower doesn't have great gear. But what compensates for that? The Great Hall. So I have 12% extra crit damage here. And I have 6% extra crit, uh, extra attack. And those type of things essentially coming together helped my bellower get to where he is to do faster farming uh same thing with uh the force affinity here if you look at my arena team my arena team right now is force and and void and because of that i'm basically emphasizing on doing these if you look at the these aff the affinity for spirit i was doing that earlier on but then i completely stopped because i'm not using any spirit characters i did use kale for a bit so and i still am till this day uh so i'm using him for clan boss so i did emphasize some of that and i am also using miscreated uh monster which is also uh, one another member on my arena team. So I'm actually emphasizing this a little bit, especially with the HP build. Uh, but basically, whatever I need at the time to kind of get past walls, like Spider-19, Spider-20, which we basically did, and it's all thanks to this, I will tell you that right now. That's the reason why I did these things. But enough talking about that, because I know like people are going to watch the video, they're going to be wondering about that. But let's get back to Madame Ceres, because we're really curious about that. So... First move, attacks one enemy has a 20% chance of placing a fear debuff for one turn. This increases to 30% if the target is under one debuff, two uh, if they're if the 45 if they're under two or more. Now, with her skill alone on trick and treat, not trick and treat, uh, midnight ritual, she will put two debuffs. So that alone will put them at that 45%, which is pretty awesome. Now let's look at trick and treats. Attacks all enemies and has a 40% chance of stealing one random buff from each target. Places a block debuff buff on all allies. If any buff is stolen, places a true fear debuff on one enemy who has their buff stolen. So basically, she does a wave, a purple wave, and if anyone gets their buff stolen, they get a true fear if it's not resisted or whatever, and then the, you know basically we get a block debuff which is pretty awesome this it's like a really cool move i honestly when it comes to arena i use this as a secondary i use midnight ritual as the primary attack and it basically mentions with everything in regards to the speed like i want her to go like third or fourth i want her to go after you know not not like before the enemies but after the enemies in hopes that she doesn't get stunned if i would want something i may want a little more resist to kind of make solidify that so she's kind of basically in that you know safe ballpark where she won't get stunned or whatever but that's kind of like the idea of it where you use midnight ritual now let's take a look at this midnight ritual is where she really shines as well so i would say it's Witch's Grace and Midnight Ritual that makes this character, like, overpowered. Removes all buffs from enemies, places a 50% decrease attack debuff and a 60% decrease defense bu debuff on all enemies. So not only does she place her own debuffs, she removes their buffs. Like, this is like doing two moves at once. It's really incredible and it's a very short cooldown. So it's really awesome to have this thing. Like, her kit is so incredible. It's just mind-blowing. I just love using the Madame in arena i love using her in the dungeons it's just really cool so that pretty much sums up all those things in regards to artifacts and skills let's take a look at masteries guys now i'm going to shift my camera really quick to the left i want you guys to see what we went down this is the, t the tree we kind of went down for the most part the important part to uh to pay attention to in this case is we kind of we did go down the 2.5 uh, turn meter for each active buff casted by this champion stacks up to 10 percent uh like she does so many debuffs which is really awesome now the thing is that uh madame Ceres, because we have this build right now and torin dropped uh torin does really counter our composition really hardcore so 
I mean, I'm not going to change this build because I do like this build in the sense that it's still decent for dungeons. So I'm going to still rock it as best as I can. I'm not going to do it for just one character. I probably will start building some other characters just to counter a Tormund team. But just to do it for that one character, it really is not worth it. Uh, even though the freeze is just ridiculous at that point. But we did go down to Cycle Revenge here. Uh, like, it, you, I don't want to read all these stats, but just take a look at the tree that we kind of went down in this case. We went down Resilience. We went down, you know, the increase of shield buffs. We did uh, heal the champion whenever they, the enemy gets healed. We do have damage reduction on her so she can sustain with all the other stuff she has. And then just basically all these going along with the debuff duration, increase chance, and, you know, uh, accuracy when you know there is no cooldown so if you wanted to pause this really quick to see what you should mimic with madame Ceres, definitely be sure to take a look at this uh and then that was pretty much it for that uh let's get into like some of the other content now because i know you guys are going to be really interested in it so uh let's talk about dungeons and then let and show an example and then let's do arena and see an example there and that's pretty much it yo if we look at madame Ceres, she's like she's really good for a lot of things guys it's really impressive like the one thing i do have her for i do have her on my dragons uh lair stage 20 team i just love the fact that she does attack down and defense down it really puts it leaves my team safe so basically i like my Bellinor, like his defense isn't great his damage is incredible it basically puts him in a position to kind of be safe for the majority of the fight which is really good so it kind of helps me get through the trash mobs by having this uh, capability and the, the other thing is like having attack down with the dragon is also a really good thing so um yeah Bellinor here in this case does weaken and defense down but we do get the attack down uh with the witch madame because um, she does attack down and defense down. Defense down is overlapped, but it's it's fine, honestly. Like the way I feel about it is like, if this helps us get past the mobs, it's it's good. So we're gonna just do a quick run so you guys can see what this is about. Like the Madame is really good when it comes to things like this, especially when it comes to like just having that, uh, just getting everyone with a freaking defense and attack down just to kind of burn through some stuff. I do want to make my team a little more efficient uh, as we progress further, for sure. But right now, this team that I, I kind of have going, it, I mean, it's a two to three minute farm. It's not bad, but it could it could be a little more efficient if we wanted to. But right now, it's like really of a tanky, tanky sort. I would probably say more support heavy, because it looks like we got three support people. We got Skartorsis, we got the Madame, and I, you know, obviously uh, miscreated monster. Yeah, I just love seeing the attack down on everyone. It, it, because then I don't have to worry about uh, Bellinor anymore. It's like Bellinor. And also the other thing is I got Bellinor in Lifesteal. So I kind of help him. It helps. Like he's my clan boss uh, lead. So he really needs that type of stuff right now. So he already applied the weaken and the defense down. Uh, Madame doesn't really have to do too much currently. Because we kind of have that covered. Like the first early on attack is not that brutal. Nice hit right there. And now we put the attack down. So that's a good thing right there. So now we have all those debuffs that we want. And the and Madame really covers it when it comes to making sure that those are there. But Bellinor really covers that weekend as well. Having that weekend is really important. Skartorsa is doing the rebirth to get rid of these buffs when needed. Or whenever we have like uh, dots or damage over time hits. Uh, that's also a really good thing that we have with this, this composition look at that damage that he does with one hit yeah we were almost there we were almost there but that's why it's such a support heavy team but the fact that we just can like the madame applies that not only to the trash mobs but also to the dragon really helps us with that she is arena build right now like she she's not into like anything where 
Like, usually the way I feel is, like, when you're doing dungeons, you need to go down the damage tree. It's either it's either damage defense or damage support, because you need to do the Warmaster proc, or you need to do the, uh, the Giant Slayer, because you need to contribute to the damage that you're attacking this monster with. It just helps. Uh, but right now, she is defense support build, which is, like, you know, obviously it misses some damage but if you can see how like basically Bellinor really carries the damage and you know rosin supports a little bit just by looking at like look at the numbers here even scar torsis kind of holds his own but like 1.8 mil right here on Bellinor, he's really doing majority of the chunk um but madame really is all about the attack down defense down i really do love the fact that her spell also removes buffs and then freaking you know puts the debuffs with as well it's just a really overall powerful move it's i hope they they never uh nerf that but it's it's really good not only for like arena also good for dragon it's pretty sick all right guys so like here is a quick example of a team that we're dealing with right now right now they basically were they were doing really good when they came to attacking us overall. I mean, they got a lot of good things in. Madame Ceres is up, and they got Revive. And they got also really strong defense up. So now we're not only going to remove those uh, buffs, we're also going to put our own debuffs in there. Look how powerful this is. So incredible, fam. So incredible. Like, right now, I might be more inclined as to, like just trying to hit them right now instead of buffing ah let's buff let's buff okay we're gonna do lightning now look how much damage this is gonna be amazing so amazing right there oh man her buff is just incredible and now we're gonna have scar torsis clean up which is crazy and you see, I could do this AoE attack just for the hell of it, but they don't have any buffs. I would usually wait for a buff to do this, and then that's how you, you know, because then you get a chance of doing a true fear. But it's also a good AoE attack. Look at that. Really amazing stuff right there, guys. I just kind of wanted to show you, this is like an example of like how strong her, uh, her basically, her, was it, A3? Is it like, boom, boom, boom? Yeah, A3 is. I'm just going to do that with Tormin. It's like these matches overall. It's just really crazy, man. It's really crazy and enjoyable. I just love playing with her. Like she is, she's like, she's legit. All right, let's do another match. Let's see. Uh, why don't we try to do this one really quick? All right, let's see this one. Let's see what we have to do here. So they got Tayrell. Yeah, they got. All right. So they basically buffed. No problem there. We'll buff too. We're not facing a Tormund, so I'm not really too scared on buffing. Uh, they already did their buff, and also uh, Aethel has that shield, so we're going to remove that. We prepped our boy Miscreated Monster to basically kind of start doing the cleanup. So we did that. Now, I could do a strong cleanup. Of cleaning everyone up or I could kind of do this unkillable removal uh, using the a2 that torment has I'm gonna just do a cleanup in hopes that we could probably kill Aethel and Tay Tayrell uh, she might just do a revival but we'll try to handle that after the fact okay there we go I really do love like the order of how things happen because if Madame's at the point where she's fast enough that she's in her faster than our characters, but she's slow enough to go before the enemies. And that's kind of the idea of what I'm trying to do strategically when it comes to Madame. So that's really like a perfect example there. All right, so we did that one. Uh, let's do another example. Like why not, right? So let's do uh, let's do this one over here. Uh, this one's a pretty good example here. We do have someone that does some crazy debuffs. Uh, we do have another one. Oh, man, yo. Arbiter just is like... She's annoying just to, to deal with when it comes to the decreased turn meter. But let's see how this handles. But she's always going to try to buff first. If we get frozen, that's where we kind of get screwed. Uh, I, The provoke is going to have to happen at this point. 
And I'm just going to have to let that rock. Um, so we're not going to be able to do our AoE Lightning here. And if I try to do a remove debuff on it, it would be kind of stupid. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that. I'm going to actually drop this. Good. I'm going to do a pretty nice nuke with, uh, with our boy Torm in here. I'm going to remove those, regardless if we're going to get frozen or not, it is what it is. I just don't want those explosions. Now I'm going to just do a nuke here. Hopefully we get to stun Arbiter. Nope. But in the process of, we could potentially go for a kill. Wow, she didn't go for a revive. Okay. But this is scary. It's almost like she knew that was going to happen. I want to kill her, so I'm going to remove that. Uh, so basically, I'm, we're, we're going to use her A2. Let's see. Good stuff there. Uh, I'm just going to do AoE. They have two buffs. We might get a true fear. We might get a kill. We got two true fears. Really awesome stuff right there. I really do love that. Going for that kill there. Uh, ally protect just cause. And this is where we kind of just like run this shit on auto. Because now it's just a long match of like killing a Tormund. Like Tormund's like a raid boss. The match was two minutes. Now killing Tormund is going to be another two minutes. It's just... Whenever you deal with a Tormund, just fight him last. It's just... It, it saves you the headache. You're going to have to... He's going to be that person that he's going to be there. And he's just going to be annoying. And you're just going to have to kill everyone else before you get to this guy. He's just too tanky. And that revival... like ha The fact that he has two health pools... That's uh, that's what it's a pain in the ass. Obviously, if you do have someone that does block revives on kill, that's where it's at when it comes to killing Torment. Good stuff. And that's an example of like how Madame and the priority order of using things also works out. Like it's really nice. So let's see. Trying to see if there's anyone else that we want to attempt with. We can try with Martyr. Martyr does have counterattack. I do want to show how that works out. And that's the reason why Madame is so strong. She gets rid of unkillable, unblockable, or, and like, oh man. That's going to be brutal. So we're going to have to, I'm not going to do the attack up crit. We're just going to have to cleanse these people. Like the, It's just too much damage. So look at this. This is a perfect scenario. All of them got buffed. But she didn't apply the crit yet. Uh, not the crit. She didn't apply the counterattack. Counterattack's important. So what I can do is I could instead do trick and treats because that's what I was fishing for. I was fishing for hopes of doing that. So we can do that, or I could go for a straight nuke. What do you guys think? I say, yo, I say screw it. Screw the counterattack. We try to nuke. Screw the counterattack. Nuking. And we got to provoke. Good. Actually, yeah. Now we're going to do this. Good stuff. Yep. So you can kind of choose your your points on how you want to do it. I mean, Tormund, the fact that he got that provoke off was really nice, especially with that. But it's like they have all those buffs. You can kind of decide to just basically what you want to do there and... You know, whether you want to use Midnight Rule or if you want to try to do the Fear. But just the priority of, like, the more buffs they have, the, you know, the better the chance of them getting a true Fear if you decide to use A2. But if you use A3 to kind of just say, you know what, I want to kill some things, that works out well. 
I mean, it, it just does. It's like the Madem's like so legit. So let's see what else we got. We got those people covered there. We could try to do another one. I mean, this is another martyr here. It's another martyr. We could wait for the counterattack buff. We could wait for the counterattack buff. Let's try it. Let's see. Okay. There we go. So, with that being said, we're buffing. Oh, man. They, they messed up our, our order, though. They messed up our order of sequence. So, here's the thing. What I may want to do is I might want to drop turn meter on someone here. I don't want to use my lightning attack yet. I wouldn't want to use my lightning attack yet. Skartorsis is going to go, but I'm not stressing that. I'm not stressing that. There we go. So. Now, I don't care that they stole the buff. They did a fear. Now they're going to get this baby. Mmm. Oh, man, that provoke. Maybe, oh. Maybe they, they shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have done that. But the fact that, that that debuff destroyed their world is, like, so important. Because I could do this now. Let me see. Actually, no. We got Martyr about to go before everyone else. And then Skartorius. No, 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 bro. He's not resurrecting anyone. Use your rebirth on you two. That's it. That's it. I, I played with Skartorius way too much to do some noob stuff like that. So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to hit him with the thunder. Oof. I could wave him. I don't care. I could hit him with this. And then it's just clean up. It's clean up Sunday, baby. There we go. It's all about Madame going after them. And then if you go after them, you take everything away, and then you just obliterate them. It's so sick. I'm just that'll be the last arena match example I wanted to kind of show there. I mean, it's it's a good example. Just picture anything besides counterattack. Picture unkillable. Picture um uh the um, the blockable stuff. Like like you could just those those buffs like you can get rid of everything. All right, guys, it looks like this wraps up the video from Madame Ceres. I hope you guys really enjoyed the content. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what type of build you guys do with Madame Ceres. I really love my build. My build's absolutely amazing. I'm really enjoying it, having a lot of fun with it, but I do like knowing what you guys do, and I love sharing the, the information. So put leave a comment, leave a like, let me know what you guys think. If you guys really enjoy all the stuff that we're doing and you want to show that support, definitely be sure to check out the description below there. We have like some Etsy links on merchandise. We have have patreon links come join us on discord so you know when we go live we chat there all the time i love talking to everyone thank you guys so much and again if it's your first time here definitely be sure to hit it hit hit that subscribe button leave a like leave a comment and until next time i'll catch you guys later peace see you guys thank you guys so much and i'll catch you guys later don't forget to follow on twitch as well yo i'll catch you guys <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if this is your first time here and you're watching from YouTube, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you ever come to Twitch, definitely be sure to hit that follow button. Come join us on Discord. The link is below in the YouTube description. Also, last but not least, I want to say major, major, major shout outs to the sponsors. If you guys also wanted to financially support the stream, definitely be sure to check out that YouTube description below. There is a Patreon link. And if you can't support financially, don't worry, guys. There's other ways you can actually show support. That's getting the word out, sharing the content, letting friends and loved ones know about this uh this channel tell them to come and hang out come join us on discord you will not regret it it's the best community slash family ever it says it right there on the freaking board yo thank you guys so much for hanging out i love you guys so much and i will catch you guys next time let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next what you think about the video and so on i'll catch you guys next time see ya